Welcome back to the D3Hoops.com Classic Conversations. I'm Dave McHugh, now joined by Chuck McBreen, the head coach of Ramapo and what we nicknamed the Chuck McBreen Invitational Classic. Do you actually send out invitations for this? <laughs> no, if I did, we would have <laughs> a lot more fans in the stands than we had tonight. <laughs> True. Um, talking to you after a, a tough loss to Linfield in a game I think a lot of people thought really didn't know what to make of, really. because. You know, East Coast, West Coast, two teams, one coming out of a Final Four, retooling in yourselves, one in Linfield that's kind of emerging. What were your expectations coming in? I'm going to be honest. When I saw that we had Linfield, I watched them play against Nebraska Wesleyan, yeah. defending national champ. They were up nine at half. They were only down three with four minutes to go and had a chance to win the game. And at that point, I knew Linfield was for real because I know how good Nebraska Wesleyan yeah. is coming off of last year. Them. And so I knew for a fact. So my expectation was to hopefully get by the first game, and we almost blew that. After having an 18-point lead with five minutes to go, we got our score 25 to 9. So I was disappointed with the way we finished last night. And then tonight, we hung around. Barnes carried us. We didn't have anybody else that would join him tonight. And we were down 6, 67, 61, and we had a, a, a layup that Travis Bennett missed that would have cut it to four. Yeah. And, and, and then they end the game now tonight on a 16-4 run after that. I mean, still 67, 61 with four minutes to go is a game. Uh, and and I, I'm disappointed that we are not finishing right now. And to get to 10 and 2, we pulled out a couple of games earlier in the year that we could have lost by finishing. So it's been disappointing, but uh, Linfield's a good basketball team, and, and we lost to the better team tonight. Well, talking about that, in the game against Linfield, you had three, four occasions where you went from double digits to within spitting distance of Linfield, including what you talked about there at the end. The team looked like they started pressing a little bit, excited about that fact. And then, But this is a young team, Chuck. You, you lost a lot of guys off of a Final Four squad. To be 10-3, and three, you got to be thrilled with. 100%. They've been very resilient uh, and all. If you would have told me 10-3 and three at this point, I probably would have signed for it. Being the competitor I am, obviously, I want more from oh, them sure, yeah. uh, and all. But, you know, we lost not just the five starters that we knew we were losing. Pat Peterson averaged nine and a half points and was our first guy off the bench. He decided to quit school and pursue a career in golf. That really hurt us because he was going to be our captain. And then we had two other role players, Zaire Newell and Dion Hale, that both played some minutes for us last year and were in our third team in rotation. And one uh, had a knee problem and is in school. The other couldn't afford to come back to school. So now we lose eight of our 13 guys, wow. and it, it's a rebuild. And so to their credit, I mean, getting Barnes really has helped us uh, stay relevant. Yeah. relevant and all because it softens the blow a little bit of losing Pat Peterson because Pat Peterson was going to be our go-to guy, our sure. captain and our leading scorer. So we've been able to hang in there, but we're going to really be tested when we get back. We're on the road at TCNJ and Jersey City right out of the gate. And, you know, we're going to have to play better than this and finish the game better if we're going to want to have a chance uh, to be in the race with Montclair and Jersey City to the end. I was going to say, you, you just mentioned pretty much all the teams in there. William Patterson even showing it. It's talent a little bit this year. Rowan's kind of lurking a little bit. The end jack has gotten deeper at the top. It's always been a battle. It's a real dogfight now. Rowan is a team that people don't realize and we went down there and we only lost by three yeah. uh, in a tight game. Rowan is really good. They only have three losses but two of them were without their starting point guard and their starting two. So without the Persian and Curry, they only have one loss when those guys have played. They lost to Jersey City and stocked them back to back without the Persian and Curry due to injuries and they went and whacked. Salisbury, who was undefeated in 22 in the country by 20 the other day, and I watched the whole game. Salisbury was really never in it. And Salisbury went the, uh, just recently and whacked somebody that was good. Uh, so you see they're still relevant uh, and all. So Rowan's in the mix. William Patterson beat Jersey City by 16, and Jersey City was a preseason number 16 in the country. Right. So Patterson is legit. And TCNJ is a good basketball team. They beat a 10-1 and team today. Uh, they've played close games with other uh, real good opponents and all. TCNJ is going to be a factor. So we have our work cut out for us when we get back. Yeah, certainly uh, that loss, to Sal uh, the win Salisbury had was against Springfield. Uh, let's go forward we talk about the fun stuff. You've been spent a year on the National Committee, gotten a chance to experience what that is like from an insider's point of view. Obviously, there's a lot that goes on. What, what, what have you gained from that year, and, and does it change your how you look at a tournament like this? No, other than from the standpoint, we all know that uh, SOS is real important in getting into this tournament as an at-large 
and coming out here, you're always going to get two opponents that are going to help you straight the schedule. I had a talk with Josh today from John, John Hopkins, and it's one of the reasons he, he played the two opponents mm -hmm. that he did uh, in all because he felt uh, his conference was down a little bit this year and he needed to get his SOS yeah. up. So he played that. I know, unfortunately, lost two close games, one in overtime and one by two today. Uh, but it will help Still the strength. Helps. It will help the strength the schedule. So from being on a committee, I've learned, you know, what is important and what you need to do to position yourself. You know, obviously, if you win your league, you're going to get an automatic. But to position yourself to get in the second way, which is through an at large. But it's been really great from the friendship standpoint, meeting people. Uh, like Tim Fitzpatrick, who chaired our committee, uh, I have a great relationship with uh, Alex Mortadelaro, Jim Haney, uh, uh, Sam Atkinson, I just uh, uh, Jared Samples. I mean, our whole committee. We got some new people this year on it that mm -hmm. took the place of some people, but it, it's a four-year term, and it's been a lot of fun for me, and it's going to be even a lot more fun uh, over these next three years that I have left on my term. You have a little more work than just picking teams, too. Oh, there's a lot of work. I, I'll tell you what, I didn't know how much was involved. And I know as the assistant athletic director and the men's basketball coach at Rampo, I have enough on my plate. And as you get older, it doesn't get easier. You would think through experience it gets easier. It gets more difficult. And now my wife said to me, did I really need to take on the committee and these things? But uh, I'm enjoying it. And uh, I, I love the fact that I did it. Uh, and, and, and I'm looking forward to these next three years on the committee. Just pace yourself, okay? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Uh, you always come to Vegas with a plan uh, of having a little fun on the side too. What was what? What have you guys done, or what do you plan to do before you head out of town? Unfortunately, we were in and out quick, and the way the schedule fell with our games this year, gotcha. we weren't able to go see a show uh, and all. Uh, we wanted to play golf. That didn't work out in the schedule and all. The only thing that we were able to do was take our team bowling one day. We do that every year. Yeah. So we took our team bowling uh, on the first day we got here. Cool. We practiced and then went bowling. So that was a good team building experience and all. And we had a lot of fun with that. But other than that, it's been all basketball. And the very next day we had to be down here scouting our two opponents. Yeah. One played at four and one played at eight. So we came here for four <laughs> and then we went and ate something. We came right back for eight and watched. Uh, these two teams uh, and all and then we played these next two days so we've been busy while we're out of here now we have a 6 a.m. flight out the bus is picking us up wow. at 3 45 a.m. so our trip is done right when I get out yeah. of here we're gonna pack get some sleep not a lot and then we're gonna get them up at 3 15 and start getting our guys rounded up and get on a bus and fly home. You're going to be racing Stevens Point to the airport. They got the exact same point schedule for the women. Uh, we should point out, by the way, when you guys scout, it's the entire staff. You don't delegate much to the assistants, so you can catch a show. No, uh, we're in this together. I mean, we're a family, and although I have a lot of trust in them and they do a great job for me, I want to get an idea and a feel for an opponent too. And even when I'm back home, you know, my wife wants some time for for me and her, but yeah. during the season it's difficult because when I come home, if I'm not out of game recruiting, I'm home on my iPad watching, you know, somebody that we're getting ready to play so I can, you know, really get into what we have to do. I know my assistants have one feel, and it really makes for good conversation where we can go back and forth with ideas on how we're going to guard and how we're going to defend certain players and certain plays and stuff. So it helps when I have a feel, and it's not just my assistants watching an opponent. Yeah, we should point out, you, you rely on your assistants quite a bit. They've been around for a long time. Appreciate the time. Safe travels back. We'll look forward to seeing what the team can do in the 2019 side of the schedule, especially in the end, Jack. Yeah. Thank you very much, and we look forward to being back out here next year. Uh, yes, we know. Chuck McBrain and Ramapo will be back for the 2019 version. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning in on the 2018 version of the D3Hoops.com Classic Conversations.